Hello, hello everybody. Welcome or welcome back to my channel where stories and other random things take center stage. Welcome to today's video. I am so excited. I'm so excited. Okay, so finally there's a full description for the War of Two Queens. Just want to say that it's a little over two months before the the actual book comes out and it is march 15th that it's supposed to come out and now there's a description before there used to be like a really short description of like war is only the beginning and i'm like but 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 that was nothing i need more for predictions granted i was actually planning to read the entire series before i did my predictions but what i'm gonna do instead is i'm gonna make my predictions now and then i'm gonna read the series and if i feel like there's anything i want to say I'm gonna say it now and I have not watched my first um I have not watched my first um uh, my first plot thoughts video or like blind woman anticipates video I did on this so this is a part two I don't even remember the things I did for that because it was a couple of months ago so we're kind of gonna start fresh so if I repeat myself I'm sorry but I am so excited but okay so usually I read the entire description and then go like just talk about it but um but instead we're gonna do this by chunks and we're gonna read and react to the plot and then I'm gonna make my predictions as this so it's gonna be kind of like a little bit different you'll see I'm so excited so excited the war of two queens finally has a full description this is awesome okay so the first part of the description is called um if you remember correctly some of this stuff had like titles and like little sections and little titles so the first one is called from the desperation of golden crowns okay Castile Denier knows all too well that very few are as cunning or vicious as the Blood Queen, but no one, not even him, could have prepared for the staggering revelations. The magnitude of what the Blood Queen has done is almost unthinkable. Okay, I want to talk about this because to me, this confirms that we're going to get Castile's point of view. Um, by the way, if you have not watched anything Blood and Ash related from me, playlist below. I'm actually going to link the Jennifer L. Armentrout playlist instead because it has everything Shadow and the Ember, um, Flesh and Fire related, and this. And I, and this, these, um, Flesh and Fly Fire is a prequel to Blood and Ash, so, uh, it's, it's like a, it's a prequel thing, so, yeah, I'm just going to link her, the playlist there because, yeah. But, okay, look, this is interesting because to me this confirms that Castile is going to be there. Um, I read the Red Pearl scene from, um, like, in his point of view. It was awesome. I will probably reread it before, <clears throat> before the, um, I, I'll probably reread re re it. Like, I'll probably reread it along with my read-along to From Blood and Ash. So like I'll probably be rereading re that, right? I I I just I love it. Okay, I know it. I love it. So I'll probably be rereading that, and um, his point of view is awesome. I I like I loved his point of view. I think she writes, uh, male characters awesome. So I look forward to that. To me, this also says that there are things he's going to find out that maybe even Poppy doesn't know. Like, I feel like there are still more secrets to be revealed. And if there's something that Jennifer L. Armentrout does really well is reveals, in my opinion. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that. But also, I feel that maybe, um, I predict that maybe because now that he is in this back captured again, it's going to bring him memories of how uh of both the time that he spent there and um and also of how um of the rescue where shay gave him uh was about to basically gave up his brother but was also about to give him up to save her life and the fact that he if i remember correctly he killed her so i feel like those are going to be memories that are going to come up and I feel th I feel like even if they don't torture Castile, those are going to be torturous enough, if we're being honest. Another thing I feel like is going to come up with Castile is that um, he's going to definitely be thinking about Poppy. Like, is she okay? You know, because he loves her. He is awesome. Like, as a, as a love interest, Aaron Blackford who? Yeah, I'm sorry. I read, I, I just read uh, The Spanish Love Deception and uh, even Aaron Blackboard cannot compare to um, 
to Castile Denier. He cannot. Or Hawk. Um, however you want to refer to him. Another thing I think might come up is definitely the the fact that he has that there's gonna be a pretty long wait, you know what I mean? Like the wait I feel like is gonna to be torturous for him and maybe he's gonna be planning. I feel like he has like the mind to plan and escape and get back to Poppy and make sure nobody harms her. But also, um I definitely feel, I f really do feel like um, there's going to be something related to the brothers happening. Like maybe confrontation or like, uh, or like uh, maybe even, I don't know, maybe, maybe try to find out why uh, Malik is doing what he's doing, why he's working with the Blood Queen. Because I want an answer for that. I want an answer as to why the hell he's working with her when they used to get along. Like, what did she say that could that could make him work? I mean, maybe he gets a really good redemption arc and it's that she he, she threatened, you know, his family and she, he just wanted to protect them or or he's just, you know, a greedy jerk. So I don't know. I feel like that's something to uh, I, that's something that might come up in this book. I definitely look forward to that. Okay, and we're got to the next section. And more and born of mortal flesh. So nothing will stop Poppy from freeing her king and destroying everything the blood crown stands for. With the strength of the primal of life's guards behind her and the support of the woven, Poppy must convince the Atlantean generals to make war her way. Because there can be no retreat this time. Okay, so before we continue reading this paragraph, I feel like, okay, I feel like the Atlantean generals probably want to take revenge, right? So Poppy probably wants to convince them to do war and try to spare as much innocent people as possible, um, both ascended and not ascended, because I we know they have, the Atlanteans have a really big, uh, ha definitely resent the ascended for everything that that's happened. Um, and at the end of uh, A Kingdom of Flesh and Fire, they almost killed Poppy because she was the maiden. So I definitely think that they probably want to do that. And now she's going to try to convince them to, to you know, to do, to do war, yes, and not to retreat, but also not to kill innocent people because she doesn't want innocent people harmed and she knows it can happen but she will try to help it as much as possible because that's just who poppy is you know that's what she i, I feel like that's what she would do and also she's probably going to try to be as nice as possible because she's queen but she you know she probably doesn't want to go through the, uh, use that power and i'm very happy that uh niktos gets his title correct the primal of life because he technically was supposed to be the next primal of life because uh, if it wasn't for, by the way, quick, I forgot to mention spoilers in the beginning. Sorry. But I'll put it in the description to make sure <laughs> before anybody watches. But anyway, um, but like um, the, I forgot his name, but Niktos' dad's brother, so his uncle, basically just like, um, he basically took, uh, took his brother's like uh, primal of uh, uh, like his ember of life and made him primal of death and then he became primal of life and but he, he they still had an ember and then he put the ember in Seraphina so she was second to the new primal of life and now so much is supposed to happen and I can't wait for the next uh, flesh and fire book which is still untitled and has no description and it's supposed to come up sometime in this fall in 2022 I need a description Okay, there's the rest of it. Not if she has any hope of building a future where both kingdoms can reside in peace. See, she definitely wants to, she definitely wants to save innocent people, but she, I mean, wouldn't she technically be ruler of both kingdoms when this is over? Because she is the daughter, she's the daughter of, um, Isbeth? Yeah, that's her name, Isbeth. Uh, who used to be Ileana, um, but she would be the ruler of both kingdoms. So she would basically reunite. She would either reunite Atlantia or truly separate them and give them, a, and maybe even place someone in trust in the rulers, wouldn't she? 
I feel like she would do that. I mean, that's like something to look for in book six, but that's something to, to think about, I feel. So um, she would be ruler technically of both kingdoms. She would wear both crowns. Um, and another thing, I think in, um, in, the, in A Shadow and the Ember, the, what is the name of it? Uh, Lasania, which used to be basically Atlantia, I'm pretty sure they used to be one kingdom anyway, like, because it was to be Lasania, but eventually became Atlantia and, Atlantia, and that whole thing was, like, one kingdom. So it would either reunite under her rule, or it would, um, or it would, um, or it would be separated, and they would become so, um, Solus and Atlantia. So, I, I, I yeah. Okay. A great primal power rises. Oh, this is, this is an exciting section, I feel. Together, Poppy and Castile must embrace traditions old and new to safeguard those they hold dear, to protect those who cannot defend themselves. But war is only the beginning. Ancient primal powers have already stirred, revealing the horror of what began eons ago to end what the blood queen has begun poppy might have to become what she has been prophesied to be what she fears the most uh as the harbinger of death and destruction okay well, okay i all right i don't fully remember the um the uh, what's it called the um oh damn i forgot oh the prophecy that came up i don't fully remember it but it definitely came back in a shadow in the ember and it looked like when i read it at least it appeared to be that part of it was about um if i remember correctly part of it was about um niktos and sarah while maybe half of it seems to be about Poppy, right? Um, so it makes me wonder how this came up. Like, how, how, what's, how, what exactly is going to happen? I feel like a lot is going to happen and that Poppy won't become the harbinger of death and destruction. I feel like she could, she might, because, okay. I'm going to predict this, but I'm thinking that since Sarah is technically the new primal of life and Niktos is the primal of death slash primal of life, it's really hard to kind of keep up here. Um, she would inherit, she would inherit powers of both. She would inherit the, pri the primal of the, the powers of the primal of death and the pri the powers of the primal of life. And we have seen that she has done it. She has inherited it. And also not to mention that I feel like even if none of it happened, she probably could have because of um, their siblings. Well, actually, maybe not. No, nah, probably not. But um, cause like, uh, because uh, Nick to Nick to's uh brother and uncle, but probably not. But like, we have seen that she has developed part of it. For example, Sarah can bring people back to life and can even ascend them like she did for, I don't remember her name. I know it was an Iris. It was the other woman, but I can't remember her name right now. Oh, damn it. And we know that, um, that she can bring people back to life. She has brought them to life and she has like called, basically called their soul back, right? And she can also heal like uh she can also heal and i'm pretty sure that was also a thing from sarah that she could heal um because there were uh there was like a wolf that she was able to heal and he didn't like die uh, no not a, a, not a wolf a bird then he didn't fully die but she fixed the wing so he was she's was able to heal as well and she's also able to feel emotions like niktos so she can definitely do that. So the question I have now is I don't feel like she'll be the harbinger of death and destruction, but maybe um, she'll have to use both her powers. But also it says that primal powers have stirred and they reveal the horrors that have happened, which means definitely both books are connected. So now I'm wondering how that's going to be 
um, maybe the gods did something before they went to sleep that basically, um, or the primals, I guess, did something before they went to sleep. And because of that, maybe now um, it it basically made it possible for for uh, Isbeth and, and all that fun, you know, that this lady, to, this way bitch to do stuff. Um, so I feel like maybe she, she would do stuff like that. Like she probably, um, maybe they, they did something that would put it together. Um, but if primal powers are stirring, are the primals going to wake up? Are they going to join this war to help? Um, well, Nikto's could because Nikto's is, you know, his, uh, her, her, um, what's, um, her, <coughs> her grandfather technically so like are the is he going to wake up i mean he already kind of helped like we're gonna see sarah at some point um in the series even if we don't see her in the first book last i checked this is a full a 12 hour audiobook hold on i'm gonna check again right now but like so much can happen but another thing i have is that since they have to embrace it says that castile and poppy have to embrace traditions old and new so it sounds like by the end of it one way or another castile is going to either be rescued or um or he will escape on his own now whether he whether his brother is going to come that's another story that's the question okay so i i'm wrong it used to be 12 hours i remember it being 12 hours now it's 22 hours the book is 22 hours a lot is going to happen in a 22 hour audiobook i know this for a fact so i'm pretty excited if you cannot tell i'm extremely excited those are all kind of my questions and the predictions i have that i can think of um i will link the jennifer l armand trout playlist below so you can watch all the content i've done from most recent to oldest um but if um uh but yeah i will do that i will do that i will just link that so because you can see my that stuff there um i'm so excited but if you want to look at the series in order i'll also have that there so i'll give you guys the option of like looking at um i'll just um actually no i'll just link the yeah i'll just link the, the that playlist there you can find the playlists if you want to look at them and in, 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 in uh, on your own um you can definitely find it there uh because my jennifer Elmer trout playlist is from recent to oldest but my uh, my playlist from from blood and ash and flesh and fire are also in my channels if you you can definitely look for them if you need to but i'm so excited so excited for march 15th i will definitely be rereading um the blood and ash series beforehand oh my god maybe i'll binge it that week oh i'm so excited anyway i'll see you in my next video until then consume stories let me know your thoughts and predictions i'm super excited to hear them